Hello friends, this is Dr. Dog back again. In order to help you understand more about linear regression, we're going to review some concepts of linear functions. Now I want you to notice before we go on that the word linear is started, it starts out with L-I-N-E. L-I-N-E spells line. So we're going to be examining line functions. Simple linear regression is founded upon the concept of a linear function. Linear regression is about drawing a line through a set of data points to find the line of best fit. In a linear function, an independent variable x is used to produce a dependent variable y under a very specific methodology. That methodology requires, first of all, to be a function that each x goes to only one y value. No x can be in two places at the same time. x goes to one unique y. That makes it a function. A line, a linear function, is uh, not only does each x go to a unique y, but a linear function has a constant rate of change, which is called the slope. And we're going to develop that very briefly here in just a moment. Linear regression has only two variables an independent variable and a dependent variable. Now those of you that are math nerds just said, oh no, linear regression can have more variables. We're not in 3D space, my friends. Right now we're only in 2D space where each X maps to a unique Y. X is the independent variable, Y is the dependent variable. The independent variable is used to predict the dependent variable. Consider the following. We're going to go through a series of pictures and this might make it a little easier to understand. I hope so. Now, here we have in, in algebra what is called the coordinate axes. In other words, we have a line called X and we have a line called Y. These meet at 90 degrees and every point on this flat surface can be identified by its X value and by its Y value. X is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is called a number line. Y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so forth. These can also have negative values. X, Y could be negative 1, negative 2, so forth. X over here could be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. I only have the uh, positive values to help you get the concept down. So we have an X and Y axis. Now here we have a line passing through a, cor a plane. A plane is a flat surface, which is defined by the coordinate axes. Notice that this line has a constant rate of change. A curve has a non-constant rate of change, but a line has a steady rate of change. The rate of change is called the slope of the line. If the slope is positive, the line's going up. If the slope is negative, the line's going down, as you view these from left to right. So we're getting some concepts here. Here we have a coordinate axis and we have a linear function. I want you to notice that every x goes to the line and goes to unique y. No x goes to two y values. Each x goes to only one y value on the coordinate axes. Y is called a function of x. A function means that every x has a unique y. And this is a special function because it is linear in nature. There can be curvilinear functions. There can be logarithmic functions. There can be exponential, logarithmic do like this. There can be exponential functions. But this is a line. This is the simplest uh, function model. Now, I want you to notice again that each x goes to a specific y. And we can define that point with what we call an ordered pair. In other words, here's its x value. Here's its y value. X is the independent variable, Y is the dependent variable. If you choose an X, you plug it into this machine or this definition, and it produces a unique Y value. A linear function is defined this way. Y is equal to some A times X plus B. Now, some of you may say, oh my goodness, Dr. Waller or Dr. Dog, this is, this is mind-boggling. I saw it in algebra where Y was MX plus B. Somebody else might say, well, it was y equals bx plus a. These numbers, a and b, are irrelevant. It doesn't matter what they're represented by. Notice that you have an x and you have a y. x is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable. 
In this formula, A is the number which is multiplied by X. A will be the slope, and B will be the point when X is zero, this goes away, and that's the point that the line crosses the Y axis. It's called the Y intercept. Notice that when you make uh, X have a value of zero, that goes away, so Y equals B. So here's the point zero and B. That's called the Y intercept. If you know the Y intercept and you know the line crosses the Y axis there, you have already some things in, I mean, you've already nailed down something. The next thing you need is what's called the slope. The slope takes a point and looks at the distance to another point and considers that the slope is the change in y that occurs divided by the change in x. That's uh, The slope is equal to delta y over delta x. Delta, capital delta in mathematics and science, often means the change in y and the change in x. So let's, let's examine that just a minute. Do you see as we go from the y-intercept here, b, out to this point, x1, y1, that, that y increased from being here at this point to that value there. Here's the change in y. x went from being right here to right here, so this is the change in x. The slope is defined to be the change in y divided by the change in x. Now, once we have this, this, uh, this line defined, and we know what its y-intercept is, which is this point right here, and we know what its slope is, then any x we put into that formula will produce for us a unique y such that every point is on the line. Now, do you feel like you need to go out on the porch and throw up? Well, feel free to do so if you need to, but be, before you do, don't panic. I want you to understand that all you really need to do is understand this formula, that y is produced by x when you have a slope and an intercept. What we're going to do is use SPSS to plug in a set of points, and it's going to predict the line of best fit for us, the line of best fit, by giving us the slope and the y-intercept. And then we will have a model which will let us predict a y value for a given x. Only two things are needed to define a linear function. These two requirements are first, a, which is the slope, and b, which is the y-intercept. So if you know the slope and the y-intercept, you can, you can get a prediction formula for any point under the, under the formula. And... and uh, and, okay, so the formula would be y equals ax plus b if we know the slope and we know the y-intercept. Again, I want to thank you very much for your support. Live long and prosper. Peace and long life. When you meet Vulcans, be sure that you can communicate appropriately with them. But keep in mind that linear regression is not as hard as you think it is. We're going to use that piece of SPSS software to do the real work for us. We'll plug in a set of points, and SPSS will take that set of points and build this model for us so that we can then plug in a given X and predict a given Y. That is very powerful. You have a blessed day.